Welcome back. It's one of my family's favorites, beef stir-fry. And joining me in the studio today is Chef Michelle Mussel with a great beef stir-fry recipe. Michelle, tell us what you have. Well, we're doing a stir-fry, but we're also we're doing a Thai stir-fry. A Thai stir-fry. So normal, okay. yeah, normally when you think of stir-fries, they're usually Asian, yeah. uh, Chinese, Chinese or yeah. Japanese. We're going to do Thai today. Hmm, a little okay. kick or what is? It's got a little kick. It's yeah. got a little red curry paste oh, to it. Wow. Um, not too much, but it definitely has a full flavor. All right, very okay. good. So we're going to start off. The beef we're going to use today is top sirloin. All right. And this recipe calls for one pound of top sirloin. Excellent. Kind of an easy cheat guide to top sirloin is that if you have it cut one inch thick, it's usually one pound. Gotcha. Something okay. easy for me to remember. Gotcha. So when okay. a recipe calls for one pound of top sirloin, it is a one inch thick steak. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to show you what for, when I'm going to stir fry, I'm going to take my top sirloin mm -hmm. and I'm going to cut it in across the grain yep, in into strips. thin strips. Yep. So I'm going to kind sense. of show you how to do a little bit okay. of that and then we'll move on. Very so good. Pull this over to my cutting board. I'm going to take my slicing knife, yep. and I like to use really long, thin, narrow slicing knives with the grooves in. Really? So that way, what this does is it creates, or actually releases friction, it adds friction, releases that stickiness, really? so, so, stick that, so wow. that the beef doesn't continue to stick to your knife. I didn't knife. realize that. Wow. It's also great for potatoes. Okay. <laughs> we like potatoes, too. So I'm going to go ahead and just start here. Just now, with top sirloin, yep. Um, because of, if you notice, all of, you know, there's several different muscles in here. Sure. Um, don't, you know, don't be so concerned when I say cut it across the grain. Okay. Because at different points of the top sirloin, your grain may change. Yeah, okay. And this is a tender enough cut that, right. um, for the most part, you're getting yeah. it, you know. But what, about quarter inch thick, eighth inch thick? Yeah, about a quarter, like yeah. quarter inch thick, eighth okay. to and a quarter. So That's I've cut good. a little, few slices. Yeah. Now what you can do from here is, you see how... You know, these are fairly long. Yes. Yeah, I usually cut those in half again. I see. Yep. So it just makes it a little easier to deal with. To eat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. Okay. Um, what I've done is, I'm going to remove this here, is I've already stir fried oh, one. half a pound. Okay. Um, what I did was I took my um, top sirloin mm -hmm. and I mixed it, I kind of like put it in a Ziploc bag and massaged it with about three teaspoons of red uh, curry paste. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a pretty thick paste. Mm -hmm. So when I say massaging it, that's kind of what it takes What's to coat doing? it all. It's not something that you just kind of drizzle over. You really right. kind of have to work it in. Okay. And that just gets even more flavor into the But once you've got it sliced. Once you get it put sliced, put it in a Ziploc bag okay. or in a bowl. Gotcha. You just kind of have to work it in. Good. Okay. So I've done that. I've um, stir fried my first, or, yeah, first batch. Okay. Now when I say I've stir fried my first batch, I say that because you always want to stir fry in at least two to three batches depending on how much meat you have. Because why? You don't want to overcrowd your pan. Um, when you overcrowd your pan, you actually have steam that happens and not mm. browning. Okay. And browning is what gives beef and any dish great flavor. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So I've got my burner on, burner's all hot and I'm ready to go. Okay. I'm going to do my second batch. All right. So here I've got another half pound I see. of the rubbed uh, top sirloin. Gotcha. So that Thai that. paste is something you can find in grocery stores? It's, yes, you, know, you can find it in your uh, the ethnic aisles, the okay. Asian aisles, and the grocery stores. Yeah. So I'm going to add that in, nice little sizzle. All right. And I'm going to kind of separate it all out gotcha. so that it's not crowding. Gotcha. We may do a little crowding at home, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe we won't after this. Well, and another mm. thing you'll notice when you crowd too much, you'll see an awful lot of liquid in your pan. I see. Which really then dilutes any sauce you're making. Gotcha. So while this is browning, yep. we're going to go ahead and start our second stage. Okay. And that is, I'm going to move this out of the way as well. I'm just going to slide this over a little. I'm going to add. Is that sour cream? What is that? This is coconut milk. Coconut milk, really? Yes. And it is wow. incredible. Okay. And you also can find this in the Asian aisle. Really? Okay. Um, and it comes in light forms and just regular uh, full, uh, full fat coconut milk. Wow. And to that I'm going to add two more teaspoons of the red um, red Thai chili paste. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to just whisk that in. Uh-huh. And this is going to add just mm. another dimension of that flavor. Gotcha. Well now you are getting exotic with uh, <laughs> Thai paste and coconut butter that's not yeah. found in the auctioner kitchen, I can promise you. I'm going to give this a stir. All right. Multitasking. Yeah, absolutely, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so the fish whisking this. Okay, we've got this all good to go. Huh. 
And this is almost set. Okay. When you're stir frying beef, yeah. um, it only takes, you know, about two, two, one to two minutes per side. Gotcha. Um, you want to just, it. yeah, you want to do it just until it's no longer pink. Gotcha. But you still want that tender bite. So right. you're still looking for, in essence, a medium rare. Gotcha. Uh, doneness. Yeah. Yeah. If you, it's looking you good. Know, if you're, it doesn't matter if you go beyond that. It, it doesn't matter how tender the steak is. Yeah. It's at make that it point, tough. you are squeezing out any yeah. juice that you have. Yeah. Exactly. Any leftover juice. That's right. Yeah. So we're about set here. That's great. As we do that, uh, you've got uh, a number of great vegetables. I love sugar mm -hmm. snap peas. And this is a great blend. You just you can find this in your produce section. Okay. And it's already mixed Frozen up for you. And, yeah. Oh, well, I, I like fresh. Gotcha. Um, particularly in this recipe because you're going to be cooking it for a little bit. I see. Frozen might break down a little. Gotcha. Okay. But I can also tell you how to incorporate frozen. Okay. All right. You just have to switch up your times a little. Gotcha. I'm going to add this into my add bowl. That to our original. You bet. Yeah. Let me move that. That's perfect. Sounding great. Yeah. Nice little uh, little adjustment from the typical roasts or steaks yeah. or burgers. That's kind of a nice new. And you know, this is a really easy weeknight meal that's kind of, you know, a lot of times, you know, your weeknight meals, you think, oh, they've got to be just, you know, something real simple. You don't really think of high flavor. Right. It's like, get them fed, get them out. Right. You know, kind of but thing. Just this is so simple, yeah. but it's really flavorful. Yeah, okay. So to my pan, I'm going to go ahead and add my oh. coconut mixture. Gotcha. All right. Wow. This is going to be different than mm -hmm. most stir fries I've had. Yes. Yeah. So now you're making it sauce. Okay. And I'm going to kind of stir this up a little bit and let gotcha. it heat. And just on low heat or just on low, low medium, maybe. medium to yeah. low. Yep. I'm going to actually turn this down a little. Okay, all right. And what I'm doing by mm. heating this is that again, I'm bringing out the spices and the flavors of that curry paste. Wow, you're you're in essence blooming it. Sure. Okay, so we've got this kind of you know going here. I'm going to add my vegetables. Okay. I think this that's what tone uh, down the heat. Oh, that's great, yeah. It looks great too. It's colorful, kind of a oh yeah, yeah, really colorful. So I'm go ahead and add these in. So it's okay with if it bubbles a little bit and so forth. Oh, you don't yeah. want it, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Because what you're doing too is you're reducing the sauce a bit. Okay. Because you want it to be just a little thick. Gotcha. You want it to coat your vegetables gotcha. and your beef. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to set this over. And so how long will we? Uh, this takes about eight to ten minutes okay. to cook fresh That's vegetables. Excellent. Now I told you 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 asked about frozen, and yeah. I can tell you how you can incorporate frozen. And basically, you're going to do this step backwards. Oh, okay? gotcha. So here I have I've you know I, I know I've got eight to ten minutes with these vegetables. Right. And then I'm going to go ahead and add back in my beef. Gotcha. Now, if you're going to use frozen vegetables, start with the vegetables. You would you would right. um, start put back put your beef back in. Oh, I see. And add your frozen vegetables. Um, okay. Now, when you're using frozen vegetables, I also would recommend that you have them thawed. Okay. Okay. In advance, that's what I was wondering. Because if gotcha. you use them straight from the freezer, right. now you're cooling everything way I back see. down again, gotcha. and then you're going to heat it back up, and it's going to overcook everything. Gotcha. Okay. So, All right. And then what do we do next? So then, now that this is getting cooked down, yep. I'm going to go ahead and add back in my beef. Add the beef. And really all you're doing at this point is you're reheating your beef. Your That's beef great. is cooked essentially, so you have to yep. remember that. That's great. And now you brought with you, as we're mixing that, mm -hmm. um, a bag of rice. And yep. I have to tell you, I've never seen bagged rice. Well, you know, I remember a conversation we had mm -hmm. in another cooking segment yep. um, about all the variation, all the uh, varieties of rice available sure. to you now. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be something that you have to think too far in advance or take up that extra time. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of times, you know, as fast, as quick, and easy as a stir fry is. Sure. Rice takes quite a while to cook. To cook yeah. So if you didn't happen to think about it in enough gotcha. time, you're like, oh, I need rice with that. So you pull a bag of frozen rice out this of your comes freezer. Frozen. Wow. You just pierce it in a few places. You microwave for three minutes, and you're all set. <laughs> this is perfect. And this is what we have when it's all said and done. That looks yep. great. Yep. And all we just did was we garnished it with a little bit more basil. Sure. And uh, it's it's delicious. Well, Michelle, you always amazed us with new twists on familiar stir fry and other kind of recipes. Thanks for coming. Sure. Again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. For details on this and other great beef recipes, just visit our website at cattlemanthecattleman.org.